Howdy, y'all. Good day, y'all. No, hey, I'm just going to do this because I've already been outed and uh, this was amazing. You actually had to be there, witness it, to believe it. I'm going to be paraphrasing this, but this will be a continuation of my patriarchy tales. And I'm just going to do this because it has to be said. This will probably mean I will be banned. I suspect in a week from now, I will be banned from this business establishment. Even though all I did was talk, I wasn't behaving in a disruptive manner. I was just simply talking to two nice feminist women. But simply trying to get them to reason with me about certain issues led one of these feminist women to say, even though this debate's getting kind of heated, I would really like to continue it. And she gave me her number. So it wasn't getting heated. I was had my man reason, my man calmed down, my man mind turned on. And so here we go. So somehow I jiggered this woman's conversation away from when it started as, because it sensed feminist theory being involved. And I moved it towards the topic of gay marriage. Now, I, for those who haven't seen my gay marriage video, watch it. I pretty much walked her through that argument. Now, we got to where we're getting them, where I got in the gay marriage and MGTOW video. We got to marriage being about love and what that meant. And that it probably meant that gay people wanted the surrounding community to support it, to support their love, to support their feeling. And I brought up the idea about divorce. Were two gay men who one chose to be an artist, one chose to make little income, and another gay man who chose to be a successful businessman to engage in business commerce and made a lot of money. What would happen if the artist gay man wanted to just sort of leave no fault? And then of course she went into alimony. And she had the decency, respect to not call it manimony, a hardcore feminist enough to realize that is sexist. And then I kept using Socratic method against her, asking her questions. And whenever meanings became unclear, I asked her to define words the way that she was using them. And then eventually, we were running around in circles, and I had to ask her, I had to clarify, so what is a marriage then? What is a marriage? Because I was operating under the premise that marriage is a social institution, that uh, we need uh, societal pressures around it to keep it together, to prevent adultery, if two human beings claim open involvement in their love to the community around them, it's incumbent upon the community now to apply pressures to prevent adultery, to enforce monogamy. And she brought up, somehow we brought up uh, the stoning of adulterers in the Bible. And I said, yes, that's an example of the society around the marriage helping to enforce and support monogamy. And she started to go off on the victim narrative. It's mostly women. Women, I was like, well, we're talking about two gay men here. We're talking about two gay men. It's women are not involved. Children are not involved. She said, oh, so we're just talking about alimony. Well, we're, we're talking about alimony relative to marriage. What is a marriage? Because we've established earlier that it wasn't really about love. It was about our society supporting love. It was about her viewpoint is she believes marriage is about giving equal rights to other people, apparently in the easiest way possible. And then, it, it, philosophically speaking, it got kind of hokey. She kept trying to bring up feminism, women, and victim, and the benefit of children. But I had already solidly established that we were talking about two men. I'd already solidly established that there are no children involved. She kept talking about taxpayers, and, and they're already benefiting uh, the society around them. And I was like, well, they were taxpayers and citizens before they got married. Why do they want us to recognize their marriage? Well, so that they could see each other in the hospital. It's like, oh, okay, so they want all the benefits of marriage without any of the cost. She was like, how are they not paying the costs? What cost is there to marriage? 
And then I said, what cost is there to marriage? Like, what other benefits besides having the right to choose life or death for your spouse is there? And then she brought up tax breaks, tax benefits for getting married. And I brought up those tax breaks, those tax benefits are probably there to encourage the majority of the population, which is probably heterosexuals, men and women who are heterosexual, to get married to the end of having children, which we probably have tax credits for children, right? we're incentivizing getting married and incentivizing having children. The government has an interest in doing this because the government needs taxpayers and soldiers to sustain itself. But we're not talking about children. We're not talking about marriage to the benefit of the government, to the benefit of the rest of us. We are talking about gay marriage seeming to only benefit to only give rights to gay people when they don't really have to give anything back that they weren't given back before. And she goes, hmm. she, we seem kind of confused on what marriage means, like what, what it meant, its meaning, its purpose, its telos. And so I asked her, can you, this quote here, this is where the gravy comes in, can you define marriage? And she said, well, originally, before the church was involved, marriage was just an exchange of property. And I said, ha, brilliant. I would argue it still is. Yes, brilliant gentlemen, out of the mouths of feminists, marriage originally, and we should argue still is, simply an exchange of property. Now, this is where she checked out. She made up some, I gotta go somewhere, here's my number. And then, and then I sat down for a while and thought about it. And then another young lady who I've known for a little while. We get along, or at least we used to. I brought up, uh, I brought up what the conclusion that was come to between two reasoning people who have studied philosophy, one man, one woman, that marriage was originally an exchange of property, and then I argued that it now still is. And I said, ha, huh, that's funny. It's funny. And then she got off on divorce, alimony, yada, yada, yada. And then I, I set up the whole I jiggered it without saying it and set up the whole premise, a letter right to it. The, the whole gold digger. And I said, well, what if one of the people lied, pretended to love the other, just to gain sexual or just to gain financial access? I pointed out that corporations are people, that um, you can marry someone, and when two men get married, their income, their financial income, becomes like a corporation, becomes one entity. The two men, through the marriage and their finances, become one entity. Now, what if one of the two men, intentionally because he knew the other man had a lot of money and he didn't have any, what if he feigned love? What if he lied? And her response was, essentially, should have made better decisions. Now, I had to address something else. So I went and let this sit. Thought about it for a bit. Then, here's where the cream comes in. Then, she comes back, and I stop her for a second, and I said, pardon me, miss. When you say the man should have made better decisions, better choices, that's also known as blaming the victim. Bam. She caught that. But then, her brain was a little slow on it. And then she went through defending then make better decisions. And this is where I'm paraphrasing, but it is exactly the Thunderfoot argument that Rebecca Watson has so much problem with. And since I'm doing a treatment on Rebecca Watson, this oddly fits in. She fits into this. So, this woman goes through, well, he should have been more careful with who he associated with. He should have been screened the person more carefully. I mean, if you're going to enter into something like a marriage, which is very serious and supposed to be, by theory, lifelong commitment, it's a very serious commitment, you, you should be very serious and very selective and very picky about who you associate with. And, and ultimately, she, she lined out the argument, the, the exact argument, practically, that Thunderfoot gives to Rebecca Watson. The advice that Thunderfoot gives to avoid rape, which Rebecca Watson says doesn't excuse the rape, was the exact same argument structure, almost 
section for section, like equation to equation, that this feminist was using to blame the male victim for the financial rape that just happened because he got duped by a lying manipulative sociopathic woman, or in this case, man, spouse. And I smiled at her in the middle of why she was making this argument because it was exactly the same argument Thunderfoot made that Rebecca Watson lost her wig over, pooped her pants, and everyone erupts over blaming the victim. It was the exact same argument Thunderfoot gave Rebecca Watson. And I smiled at the lady and I said, quote, now you're thinking. Now, remember that argument structure, young lady, that you just used when addressing another issue. I didn't want to say the word because that would have got me banned. You can't say certain words in polite society, especially around women. And I said, thank you for your time, young lady. And I started smiling. I started getting ready to leave. And this was the beautiful moment. This beautiful young woman, this beautiful young liberal feminist hippie chick with a great figure was walking away, hips swaying. And I was about to get up and I was smiling. And I looked at her one last time and she stopped. She looked over her right shoulder and looked at me dead in the eyes with some sort of hate. She just realized it took her about 45 seconds to realize what I just did. But when she realized it, she looked at me with just the most beautiful hate. And I smiled back at her and gave her a little wink. And I got up and left. So yes, gentlemen, yes, you should have seen it. It was beautiful and glorious. And to Rebecca Watson, yes, Miss Watson, to feminism, I am worse than rape threats. All right. Well, you guys have a nice day. And always remember to go your own way. Yours truly. Uh...